You play any Sea of Thieves? <laughs> Actually, okay. Uh, sea of Thieves is one of those sea games. Sea of Thieves nuts fit in your mouth. <sighs> <sighs> that did not just happen to me. <laughs> Welcome to Trevor Talks Too Much, the show where I bring on a guest and I talk to them and I can see if maybe we can become friends, become homies, maybe talk again sometime. Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Everts, master baker, mythical soft boy, two-time Oscar-winning director. Don't fact check me on that. Today, I spoke with Sigils, uh, who is, what, you shook your head, Jamie. You don't believe me? Look it up. Uh, No, I'm not going to fact check. Today I spoke with Sigils. Uh, he's a YouTuber. He's a gamer. He mainly plays Minecraft, but he also does a lot of other stuff. And we talked about also we talked about so much stuff. I didn't want to stop talking. Okay, that's no joke. It was a great conversation. We talked about sea shanties. We talked about Minecraft. We talked about whitewater rafting. We talked about ourselves and our feelings, and we got to know each other a little bit better. This is the part of the show where I go into a little rant. A little silly little thing. Tell a story or something. And for the first time, forever and ever, for the, for the first time ever, I got nothing. I'm shocked. I got, Jamie, I have nothing. I feel like you talked so much to sigils that you just got depleted. You know what it is, Jamie? <laughs> I've been playing a lot of RuneScape recently. Oh, God. So no, I have, no, I, I no. Have We're nothing, getting into the show. I have nothing to talk about. <laughs> We're going to go into the interview in, now. I'm like almost, I'm grinding level 99 crap. No. <laughs> Jamie, let me talk about the things <laughs> I like. I'm you talk sorry. about it in the episode. I like RuneScape. Is that, no, am I not allowed to like things? You can like it. I'm sorry. We can get into the show. Now I feel bad. No, it's okay. You're right. People don't care about RuneScape. Okay, everyone, it's a great episode. It really is. I, it is. It's a great episode. We had a lot of fun. He's a great guy. Um, so I'm not going to talk about RuneScape anymore, except when I do, and when I do, which will happen. But have fun and enjoy. Is we do that? Just go on the internet and farm it for views? No, I would never. I would never try and make money on the internet. <laughs> um... I guess I'll did introduce the guest, everybody. Welcome, <laughs> uh, Sigils, also known as Andrew. Uh, and you are a Minecraft slash variety, do lots of different stuff, gaming YouTuber. That Yeah, that's exactly what I say when people ask me. I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Minecraft and other stuff. Other I stuff. Guess, yeah. I guess. Don't you hate it when you like confine yourself to that box and then you do one thing that's not that and people are like, what the hell? What have you done? This isn't what I want to see. You've changed. Yeah. You're like, I don't know. I was bored today. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've got some friends. That, there's a ga- There's not a game worse. I know, Jamie, we're only a, like a minute into this, but I'm already going to talk about RuneScape. <laughs> I've got some friends that are RuneScape YouTubers, and the RuneScape community, when when a RuneScape oh. YouTuber does something that isn't RuneScape, they're like, it's like, it's a personal attack. Yeah. They're like, what? This isn't RuneScape, the most dynamic and entertaining game of all time. Um. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Jamie's I'm gonna... scared of the RuneScape community, so yeah. uh, no comment at this time. I don't know him. Yeah, I no, just walked in here. The, 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 the RuneScape community's fine. They're they're good people. They're, it's actually like not a bad community. There's a few. There's a few the sketchy people. You know the truth. Yeah, what's the truth? I actually um, know a lot of Minecrafters who came from RuneScape, which really? I guess is like a logical pro- progression when you were 12 playing RuneScape and then yeah. Minecraft came out. Yeah, but I don't know very many people who stayed in RuneScape. That's a a decision. It's like well. Um, there's an old saying amongst the RuneScape community that you never really quit RuneScape. You just take long breaks. And literally, that's what everyone says. It's like, you, like it's same for me. I stopped playing for like five years and then eventually one day I was like, I think it's time to return. You woke and, up and just had the itch. Yeah, You're like, I was oh. like, oh, I want to get on RuneScape. <laughs> um, now also, Jamie's going to get mad at me if I don't say this, but the, the goal... Jamie's, yeah, you, she's mad at me already. You can see her head's I, dude, in her hand. Are you okay? Blink once if you need help. He didn't blink. All right, we're good. We're good. Everything's fine. The funny thing is, is the abuse is normally thrown at me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um. So the goal of the show, we just talk. That's the whole show I, the idea. Um. But I, I, in an ideal world, by the end of it, we would be friends. Oh, okay. So that's kind of the goal. So if you, um, if not, then I've failed and Jamie's failed. 
Um, oh, okay. And you're allowed to punch us before you leave uh, if we've disgraced you and dishonored you and you hate us by the end. But oh, that hasn't happened yet, thankfully. So you'd say I'd be the first. You would be the first, yeah. Huh. I have had I one like person try to kiss me. Um, That's kind of the other end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was a really good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, back to RuneScape. So <laughs> here's the thing about RuneScape is that it's amazing. <laughs> and <laughs> as I was saying. Yeah, as I, as I was saying. Uh, welcome to the RuneScape podcast. I'm your host, Trevor, and Jamie's screaming inside right now. Um, <laughs> so what's your like, when you're playing RuneScape, like when you lo- start up a new character, what's the first thing you go for 99 on? Like what's your min-max like path to like really optimizing? Well, here's the thing. There's optimizing and then there's being a giga chad. Okay. Um, the optimizing is that you, as soon as you start the game, you go do Winter Toad to level 99 fire making. Okay. Um, because it's a mini game that is easiest. Like it's super easy to do with low hit points because you take damage during it, but the damage scales off of how high your HP is. So when you're at low HP, you don't, you barely take any damage. That's optimized. The Giga Chad way to go is to get 99 fishing, which is like one of the longest skills to train and is terrible. And the XP rates are awful. And, but it's just like, if you have 99 fishing in RuneScape, you're like, it's cool. Anyway, Jamie's really going to get mad. I at thought me. about hijacking no, this no. and then just like running. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, they'll never have me back. Yeah. <laughs> we had sigils on and he just made him talk about RuneScape Dude, for an hour and a half. If you, I'll do it. I, I swear know. to God, I'll I do like, it. I'll do it. I'll fucking do it right now. <laughs> I sensed it. I was like, oh, we could freight train this off yeah. into a real bad direction. No, it would I was be like, terrible. Right, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Oh, man. It's my parents' fault. Okay. It's my parents' fault because I used to play RuneScape as a kid with my family. My dad started playing RuneScape because he would had a job where he was like on conference calls a lot. And what he would do is he'd be on a conference call and then he'd just be playing RuneScape. And then he like had super high stats and then he got me into it when I was like seven. And then we oh, started- Oh, get him early. Yeah, get him early. <laughs> <laughs> I remember actually, okay, this is the last RuneScape story before we move on. <laughs> I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> Wholeheartedly, I don't I believe you. God, Andrew, shut up. <laughs> this is my show. <laughs> I'd say what I want. It feels like it's a RuneScape show. <laughs> We're just living in it. No, I- so when I was young and I played RuneScape, I wasn't allowed to know my own password because my parents were like, they didn't want me always on it. And so when I was a kid on the weekends, I would get up like really early in the morning. It was like when I was a kid and you just wake up at like 530 in the morning on the weekends. And so like every Saturday morning I would go and I'd wake up super early and be like, it's RuneScape time. And I'd go and like wake up my parents and bed and whisper and be like, can you enter in my RuneScape password? <laughs> And then eventually my dad just gave me the password because he's like, I'm tired of getting woken up at 6 a.m. on Saturday by my dumb kid wanting to play RuneScape. Are we the same person? <laughs> Are we? So I used to do that, but uh, this was like back in the dial-up days, like probably around the same age for me. Yeah. Uh, we, my family only had one phone line. So if you were on the internet, the phones wouldn't work. Yeah. Right? So I would wake up at 5.30 every Saturday to play Age of Empires 2 online oh. with my friends yeah. because that was the only time I was allowed to like monopolize the phone system, yeah. you know, because at like 10 a.m. they were like, all right, we need people to be able to call because yeah. I guess people called you back then. I don't know. It's weird. But yes, so I identify <laughs> with this. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was a real thing. And then I just sit there and I grind out RuneScape in the office by myself for like four hours, three hours, four hours till my parents woke up. Then they'd hop on and we'd start doing some bossing together, doing whatever. We have a little RuneScape family day in the, uh, in the living room. Um, you know what they say? The family that ruins together, escapes together. Actually, what... I swear to God if they actually say that. No, <laughs> okay. it's, it's funny. No, because there's a skill in RuneScape called Slayer, and my dad had, like, that was his favorite skill, and he had 99 Slayer, and he, he, we would always say, a family that slays together stays together. Oh, Dang it, I almost cute. found yeah, it. it. Was I almost You're found so it. Oh. I was like, if he says it, this podcast is going to be over. weird. <laughs> he starts crying Get and out. just leaves. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Core memory unlocked. <laughs> Oh my god. So you, you, okay, well, let's get into a different game. Minecraft. <laughs> Basically just the next version of it, yes. Yeah, yeah, the next, the, we've evolved now into the Minecraft podcast. Um, so you're, the majority of your content is Minecraft, right? Yeah, um, because Minecraft, it, it, making content with games, you have to pick something that's really got, like, longevity. Yeah. Minecraft's yeah. eternal, right? Like, yeah. Everyone's playing that, like, the Legos uh, of our generation. Yeah. Like, they're gonna be playing Lego, or Minecraft, every kid who, like, turns seven, their parents, like... Have you heard of Minecraft? And then off they go. And so stuff's still being made for it. There's just so much you can do. Other other games are so linear and they're really fun. Yeah. But like people don't really like watching or it's hard to like build a community around. Yeah. I play different games. I play. Yeah. I play different games or I play one game that like 
unless you're like really good, I've noticed that like people, the really successful people that play like shooter games, it's only if you're like really crap. Yeah, if you're a pro. It. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if, like you're, a pro. if you're like a nuts. I tried to do that first. Yeah. I tried to play video games professionally. What game? Uh, Call of Duty and Halo. Okay. I used nice. to go to like the tournaments and stuff. Yeah. And then, but like at the time, the top teams in the world were making like 500 bucks a month. That was like their salary. Like, bro, oh you're like, God. I'm signed to an org and they're paying me 500 bucks a month. And I was like counting yeah. on my fingers and was like, in this many years, I'm going to be too old to do this. And uh, also, that's not enough money to pay my rent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, well, those people are trying funny on the internet. Let's do that one Let's instead. Let's do that one. Yeah, funny on the internet. <laughs> Make a fool of yourself. I, every moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, Minecraft really is. I mean, it's one of those games that I feel like it, you just keep going back to and there's like, there's, it's just so refillable and it's like the perfect sandbox game because you can do anything and you can, there's so many different ways of playing the game and there's no right way to play the game, you know? Oh, there's a right way. Oh, okay. Oh, there's a right way. Actually, oh, no, 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 you know there's a wrong way to play Minecraft. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, what's the wrong way? If you dig straight down, dude. Come on, everybody knows uh, that. Okay. <laughs> what if you're going for fastest death speed run in lava? Well, there's still faster ways to die to lava than that. What about exposed lava? You go to like a mountain biome, there's always just a lava fall. You don't have to do any digging. Yeah, but what if your freaking spawn isn't good for you just find a new seed? Are you just gonna are you just gonna redo seeds until you get a nice exposed lava? I mean, maybe if that's, that's probably I mean, the right that's way to that, do that, it. That's the speed You're run. Right. My bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. What about the speed run for the fastest death from digging straight down? Okay. Got you. Yes. Well done. <laughs> I bet that's a category. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's definitely a category. It's like You're right. I take it back. There's no wrong way to play it's like Minecraft. 45 seconds. You've ruined everything. You just got to get a shovel and a pickaxe and just go for it. <laughs> um, God, no, Minecraft's great. I, it's like I remember growing up in, and Minecraft was very much like in its. I remember kind of like being introduced to Minecraft when it was still in its early days. Like mm-hmm. my friends, like when we were kind of in like probably like elementary, junior high, just kind of being like. <laughs> Kind of yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, there's this new game called Minecraft. Or not this new game, but like, we've been playing this game called Minecraft. And I remember getting it like on my phone for the first time too, and I'd like play in car rides. But it, it really is like you can still like I've never gotten tired of it. Like I take breaks from it. Obviously, I'm not like playing it every day because mm-hmm. I don't do it for content. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like my friends and I, like almost every year, we'll 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 get on like a kick where we're like. Let's let's start up a realm. Let's yeah. do it. And it, then we play religiously for like a month, just every day, like after work, we get on and we grind just for hours and hours. And then like, we kind of all like, you know, fade out and it's like, oh, that was fun. And then next year, next we're back year, see to you guys. It. Yeah. Yep. There, there's nothing also like the first time playing Minecraft. Like it's such, it has, it just captured that like expanse of like endless possibilities and like the fun of exploring. And yeah. like once you kind of understand it all, it's a different game, yeah. right? Like, and it's still fun. <clears throat> but I still remember that first time playing where it was the same thing. Like I had some coworkers who were like, yo, have you heard about this Minecraft game? And I yeah. watched a video and this is like what ruined my life, right? This is the moment was I watched this video of somebody playing the alpha of Minecraft and he was like trying to show you how to build a, like a cool looking fireplace in Minecraft. And he built yeah. this whole house out of wood. And he misclicked the fireplace and he lit his house on fire and the entire house burnt down. And he was just this like nerdy old British dude being like, oh no, oh no, as his house just burned. <laughs> and at the end of the video, like this house that he had built is just gone yeah. and he like doesn't know what to do. And I was like, I want to play a game like that. That looks awesome. <laughs> and I went home and I downloaded it and I remember it was like nine at night. And I was like, all right, I'll check this game out before work tomorrow. And the next thing I knew it was 4 a.m. And I was yeah. like, huh? What just happened? Where did I just go? Wh- <laughs> no, and then my I, life was ruined. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry for ruining your life by you being on the podcast. Well, yeah, this is the bottom. Yeah, like, this is the bottom. <laughs> you've reached the bottom. It's like, I well, blame that for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I feel like everyone's been there, though. Not like every kid's like, oh, I want to put a fireplace in my house that they just built, not understanding the mechanics. And they're like, oh, I'm just going to like light this here and it's going to look so cool. And then like you leave to go like cut a tree and you come back and your house is gone and you're like, what happened? How did all my work? <laughs> Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, but also, but like, games had not been that flexible before then. Yeah. So it was like kind of like the thing you always dreamed that somebody would make a game like that. Yeah. And then to see it actually happen, you're like, oh, it's the future now. Yeah. I'm here now. Now, if like a game isn't that flexible, you're like, this game sucks. Yeah. I'm gonna go play Fortnite. Yeah. Or whatever. Fortnite is freaking. Did they take away no build mode? No, it's still there. Are it's you still kidding? there. It's still, <laughs> it Thank was God. like the, it was the breath of life. Yeah. It was a game was dead until they. Brought, 
I um what 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 game do you think you would like if you picked another game if you couldn't play Minecraft anymore if your channel wasn't like mine mostly Minecraft what do you, what game do you think you would play a lot of I think well so actually I mean I've done Minecraft for a very long time but where I first got momentum was in Fortnite oh really um and I my group of friends we did the Fortnite creative mode like yeah. where you build your own games yeah, inside yeah. of it yeah um kind of with the same premise right it's like sandbox you can make an endless amount of content just given the tools yeah so I think that would be where I would have to go because yeah. uh, for the way that like me and my friends like to play is like we like to make challenges and like play against each other do these kind of like yeah endless things um, and it was a ton of fun I actually really enjoyed it but I remember we were playing the early seasons of Fortnite and it was like people started leveling up building yeah and I remember distinctively having the thought that's like oh this game's not gonna be fun in about two months yeah <laughs> and then people were just like building the Eiffel Tower in like a second yeah and it was like no oh I'm god good. so I, then we went back to Minecraft <laughs> yeah no for it's so funny because I played a ton of PUBG when PUBG mm -hmm. first came out when it was like a good game um and I had like hundreds of hours in that and I loved it and then like Fortnite started getting popular and like I I could not play it because I was like this is the worst mechanic ever why would they make building a thing this is so cringe my aim is so much better <laughs> than these dumb kids and they're just building freaking Fort Knox in two seconds and they're just out building circles around me I'm just standing on the ground trying to figure out where the hell they are so I can shoot them and I hated it and I never played it <clears throat> yep. and then PUBG got really bad because the devs are awful <laughs> and Welcome to the Hot Takes podcast. Actually, yeah. that's not a hot take at all. That's a pretty no, universally no. agreed upon opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> devs are terrible and don't know what makes a good game. And they ruined the game. And then I was like, well, I don't want to play this. I don't want to play Fortnite. And those were like the two BRs at the time. And then like Apex came out. Mm. And then I was like, you know, maybe I just am tired of the Battle Royale genre. Uh, and then I dumped my life into Rainbow Six Siege, which is oh. also now a dead game. Yeah. And also that's a choice. Yeah. You're like, mm, you know what I'd like with my community? A little bit of salt. Yeah. The Rainbow Six. My sodium <laughs> levels are too low. <laughs> Dude. That was like the first like real online shooter, like FPS shooter that I played a lot of on PC. And I was like so bad when I first started, but I grinded that game. Like I had a, well over a thousand hours and like I got like pretty good. And then I just like, I played it for so much and I got good. And then I like, it was like, I just needed to get there so that I could quit. <laughs> it's like the whole time I wanted to stop playing the game, but I was like, if you don't achieve something in this game, then you're going to hate yourself you. for wasting all this time. Yeah. And then I like achieved like, like plat one, which at the time was like just a couple ranks back from like the highest rank you can get. And I was like, I'm good. I can, I can be at peace now. I can hang up the old <laughs> rainbow sticks. Six. Yep. And I can go back to playing League of Legends. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Something hate, new and different. Uh, do you hate yourself? What I is do, this? I do. <laughs> I do. I do hate myself. That's. I mean, we could talk about that if you want, but... No, I, I have a <laughs> terrible choice in video games. I play, like, the worst games ever. Does this translate to relationships as well? Like, is there is there a correlation here? No, actually. Great. Okay, well, that's no, good. yeah. Because I'm I, bad at both, so that's, you know... That might be honestly what it is. It's, like, everything else in my life is pretty positive. I have pretty positive relationships with all my friends, with my girlfriend. So maybe it's, like, I just need a little bit of, like, toxicity in my life. Life, Must be nice. Just to like spice it up. So yeah. I played terrible video oh, games. Okay, online. sorry. I didn't know your life with um, rainbows and puppies. I, I regret asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you should. <laughs> My life <laughs> rocks. <Yeah. laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Go back to Minecraft, Fortnite, Among Us. Oh, you're just naming everything that's ever hurt me. Just. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what's it? What's it like being on like the? Because <clears throat> would you say that like you? You play a lot of Minecraft, but you also like do your best to follow like gaming trends that are going on. Yeah. What's that like? Like, is it, are you ever in a, like a space where you feel like you're waiting for the next thing? Like what's going to be the next game? Do you feel like anxious about what it is? And then if it does hit, then you're like, then you're like, I need to get on this as quick as possible. You're describing currently. You're oh, describing yeah? this moment right now <laughs> that we're living in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... The pandemic was was crazy, right? Because everybody yeah. went home and so everybody kind of like rediscovered this love of gaming. Yeah. But also it really slowed down game production. We haven't had yeah. anything come out. Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things. I mean, a lot yeah. of, yeah. But we haven't had like that thing. And yeah. also I, I think I truly believe that the games that are that thing are an accident every single time. Oh, yeah. Fortnite was supposed to be a tech demo that yeah. they literally made in-house and they're like, this is kind of fun. We should put it out. And yeah. then it exploded. Minecraft. That dude had no idea. Like, the story of how Minecraft got made is crazy. Yeah. He was, like, literally refused. Like, he got did not get hired at every single major game dev. They are all like, you don't know how to code. You're self-taught. Yeah. You're a loser. And he lived in his parents' basement and made a video game that turned him into a billionaire. Like, w that's not how life works. Yeah. Um, Among Us, same thing. Game had been out for three years. It was made by, yeah. like, three guys. And everyone was like, oh, this game now. Yeah. 
So there's like this combo of you can't predict the next big game, like the next true, like huge one. But right now, everybody's tired of Fortnite. Everybody's tired of Among Us. And everybody's like, they're going through that lull of Minecraft, which is like, we played it. We're chilling. Like, you know, next year we'll be back. Minecraft does that. It goes like, oh, Minecraft. And then everybody goes, "Eh, it's Minecraft. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, Minecraft. So we're, we're at the bottom of that right now. And there isn't like the new thing that's popped out. So it's, it's very much like, hey, it'd be cool if. Like somebody came out with a game that we were all excited about. Yeah. My career is dependent upon it. That'd be <laughs> super nice. Oh somebody could just do that. God. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. I remember my friend uh, before, like probably like six months before Among Us got really popular and like blew up. I remember my friend, I was like asking him what he's playing. He's like, I'm playing a game called Among Us. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you're like little space crew. You're like little <laughs> space guys and you walk around and, and then there's an imposter. And I was like, Dude, that sounds awful. Like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you describing to me? Like, that's uh, what? I was like, what is this? That sounds so bad. And then, like, literally like, six of the later, I was like, oh my god, I remember Alex telling me about this, and now it's the biggest game ever. The the pitch for Among Us is terrible. Like, just <laughs> right? objectively, if you have no concept, you're like, yeah, man, you're like on a ship, and you're like, you have to do tasks, but they don't really do anything. But like, yeah. while you do them, somebody kills you. But like, maybe I yeah. don't know. And then you can decide who it is. Yeah, it's just like if you took the <laughs> game do Werewolf and then you made it into a video game that had like really terrible UI. <laughs> and also there's no cool abilities or anything. No, it's just yeah, like nothing. stuff happens. Yeah. And you're like, what? why would I ever? And then you played like 100 games in a row. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. We sure did. <laughs> we sure did. I still play some. So it's... I, I've like kind of been wanting it to come back kind of. Like, because I know... That would be fun. I know it's been like coming around a little... Some people still play it and stuff. But I was like, I feel like it got burnt out so fast because it was. Everybody was sitting at home. Nothing was going on. Everybody was at their computers and they just had hours to kill. And then everybody finds this... What is it? What was it? Like $5? Yeah. Is that how much the game yeah, costs? something like that. And I was like, there's this $5 game on Steam that's just like, you can just yell at your friends for five hours straight and it's the best time ever and so everybody's like i'm doing it every single day and then we played it like every night and there's just like it does get tiring you know when you have 10 people in a discord call yelling at each other like every night you get to the point where you're like i need to do something else yeah i, I gotta, gotta i'm too stressed I, i've yeah, been lying to all of you for a week yeah i'm f- gaslighting my friends <laughs> and my girl my girlfriend hates me because i said if you vote if you vote me then you don't love me and she didn't vote me and i was the imposter <laughs> And 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 now she's mad at me because I freaking gaslit her <laughs> just to win a stupid game. And um and yeah, you you gotta take a break. But I think if it came back in like moderation, it would be fun. Like if like once every couple weeks, like me and the me and the boys just got on for a little lie little to months, each other like yeah. boys do. Yeah. Yeah, like the boys yeah. do. I'd be down for that. Nothing you know, like a little dishonesty, you know? Yeah. I, I'm I'm curious what the next game will be though. Like I feel like it's been fluctuating a lot. Like if for a while, it was like BRs. It was like the next BR. But I feel like that's not. Re- people are kind of tired of them. I agree. I think it's going to be. It has to be something that's open. It has to be something that's flexible, and it has yeah. to be something that kind of like lets you use your imagination to some degree. Yeah. I mean, because like even Fortnite, w- Fortnite was so different. Yeah. That you still used your imagination, even though it was a battle royale. So like, I, I yeah. think that like something like that in that space. Yeah. But it'll, it'll be something that sort of reimagines. I think like the concepts we're used to. Yeah. But in in probably usually a very simple but charming way. Yeah. And then everyone will be like, whoa, and then you oh, dive yeah. into it. And it's and it also has to have the tools for the community to kind of like take and run with it. That like user generated content stuff. Yeah, That's for really sure. what like pushes things to that next level. For sure. Yeah. I'm excited for whatever it is because right now I just play Valorant and League every night. <laughs> and um it's really good for my mental health. Yeah. Really good. Well, we've covered everything else is great, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. I um, I blame actually my my friend Brandon. Brandon, she, I know you don't listen to the show, Brandon, because you're literally a hater. Because Brand Brandon's told me he's like, I'm not gonna listen until you get XQC on. I was like, dude, XQC is like of all people in the world to nail down. He's like the worst. He, uh, my roommate's his agent, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Well, regardless, <laughs> he, he literally, no, <laughs> we're scared. so maybe for you, he's not the hardest person to nail down. I mean, I'm just saying, I know a guy, if you want. No, we were, he was supposed to be the first guest on the show. No way. <laughs> and then he, he just flaked and oh, no. it never happened. I don't know. And I'm like, Brandon, you, like, can you just support me for once, please? Yeah, Brandon. Br- anyway, Brandon, Brandon, when I was like a freaking freshman in high school, 
is when he's like, hey, you should get this game. Me and, my, me and Kevin have been playing it. Frick you, Kevin. Me and Kevin have been playing it. It's called League of Legends. Oh. And I was like, what is that? And I had no idea. I'd never played a MOBA before. And they were like, there's this character called Teemo and you put down little mushrooms. And I was like, what? And this is when I was playing a lot of Minecraft. And you know when you don't know what something is, so you take the thing that you relate it to most and you create that in your head. So then I'm like imagining like a Minecraft style, like first person game mm-hmm. where like somebody's running around, like throwing this little guy's running around throwing mushrooms. And then I download League of Legends and here I am like seven years later and I hate myself. <laughs> Okay, we're getting a lot of mixed messages because you're like, everything's great, I love myself, but also you hate yourself. No, everything's great, but I hate myself. Oh, okay. I could vibe with that. The self-hatred that's is, it, that's, not a, that's not a new thing. Oh. That's not a, and that's not a League of Legends thing. Really? We could blame League of Legends. We could, and but that was would be Kevin? disingenuous. Kevin? And Kevin. And Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's a big one. <laughs> Kevin, listen, I called Kevin, uh, I, I called Kevin a, a dingus or a bungus on one episode i don't remember who it was with but then after that i said i was like it doesn't matter because he doesn't listen to the show and then he sent me a video of him and he's like of me saying that <laughs> saying kevin is a bungus frick you kevin and then he's like what did you say i don't listen to the show. i was like ah oh, kev dog i'm no, no, sorry different kevin. Yeah, you wouldn't no, know him. yeah you, you wouldn't know him. yeah different guy he goes to a different school oh man <laughs> you were a you were a director of game design at mindplex is that is that <laughs> okay. true who's been researching yes jamie yeah. jamie <laughs> jamie that's jamie. the one she researches i i, I read sometimes <laughs> I'm good at reading. <laughs> I'm, good at reading. <laughs> I'm good at reading. <laughs> yeah. I was. Yes, that's true. Guilty. Dude, I, I remember. Sorry, Jamie. I remember. I <laughs> no, Jamie. I saw you giving me the side uh, eye. No, I, I was saw the... you giving me the side eye. Welcome back to the podcast. Look. <laughs> anyway. I just trying to be the most unhinged guest who's been on. You are. I would say that you're close, but you're not. Yeah, that's, we uh, we had someone really unhinged. You'd have to do some crazy stuff, but you've been a lot of fun so far. I think I think yeah. we're on the right track okay. here to becoming right. friends. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Listen, it's only 24 minutes in. <laughs> like, <bad>. Don't spoil <laughs> the ending. I'm sorry. I said we're on the right track. Who knows? Who knows what could happen? Um, why are you looking at me like that, Jamie? Oh my god, I'm supposed to be like, I'm spectating, I'm producing, I'm listening. Yeah, but you were giving me a I was a also going to say that out of all of the times that uh, Trevor has talked about RuneScape, this has been the most entertaining. <laughs> really? I, I can talk about it more if you want. No. It's I'm funny, because that, I was actually thinking about it. talking about RuneScape <laughs> earlier, but then I, in my head I was like, no, I, I, I got I it all out of the way. It. I got myself here. No, it was going to be related <laughs> to something that we were talking about earlier, but that moment's passed, so I'm not going to say it. Anyway, I, I remember playing Mindplex back in the day. Did you? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, no. No. I'm my, kidding. I'm kidding. It was a lot of fun. My friends and I used to play so much like Bed Wars and, and, and survival games. Survive, uh, what was it called? I, was it called Hunger Games or was it called Survival Games? It was called Survival Games on Mindplex, but the like, but it was on Minecraft. Games. They called it like Hunger Games. Yeah, like Minecraft, that was like the Hunger general games. like term for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I that, couldn't remember the technical term. I don't want the. <laughs> we Minecraft didn't believe in copyright game. infringement, so you know. Well, that's your bad. <clears throat> but um, <laughs> I, I was. I think Survival Games was my favorite. I was one um, of the big ones for sure. Yeah, I remember that the sweet taste of victory. And the first win, sweet taste, of sweet taste of victory when you get your first win and you're just like, wow, this is, you get that, oh man, you get that nice chest, get that great start. You find some good loot. Like literally the beginning of BRs. Truly. My, yeah. BRs were born in Minecraft. Yeah. It's that, well, that in the movie Battle Royale, but the, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. as far as like the video game current trend. Yep. Yeah. It is. Our fault. Your fault. I participated. I helped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Frick you. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. So so what did you, director of game design, what, what did you do? So basically, um, for a couple years, any content that came out went through me. Yeah. Um, initially, when I started, I was just like a project manager, but it was basically like I would design like the next mini game that we made yeah. or an update to something. Like I was just in charge of, who, you know, how do we balance? What are we, you know, what are we doing with it? Are we changing yeah. things? Are we adding things? All of that went through me. And then over time, I kept getting promoted until the entire department went through me so every single piece yeah. of content that went out um i was usually re- usually like writing like the design documents of like okay we're gonna make uh we made like the i don't know if you ever played the gladiators mini game that was like the little tournaments it was like 1v1 tournaments and you would start in different 
like little arenas, and yeah. then when you won, it would like advance you oh, yeah, to the yeah, center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like I forget what was it, sixteen or eight or twelve players or whatever, yeah. and then the one man standing at the end kind of thing. Yeah. Like that was one of the first projects I did for them, and it was like we came up with that whole system to do yeah. like the automatic matchmaking and to uh, to put you all in. So it was sort of uh, like game design, and then also project management to actually then get it made, and then yeah. developers would make it, and m- me and like some of the other people on my team, staff my team, team yeah. we would uh, we would play, and then we would say, okay, change this, change this, change nice. this, and that kind of stuff. That's sweet. Well, it was really fun. If you ever played Mindplex, Sorry. Yep. you have Andrew here to thank for hours of enjoyment. I, me and my friends have you to thank for hours of enjoyment playing Minecraft. Daisy. Oh my God, I forgot about Daisy. Dude, I saw Shroud was playing Daisy recently. That's how you know we're bored. Shroud's playing Daisy. Yeah. I was like, I watched, I was like, what year is it? <laughs> Hello? I was like, what is it freaking 2016? Why is Shroud playing Daisy? And he's just running around, clapping kids right in the freaking noggin. Imagine <laughs> you're playing like a survival game, right? It's an old survival game nobody plays anymore. You're into yeah. it. You and your friends are on this server. Yeah. And then just the god of gaming casually walks through. He's like floating six inches off the ground and just strikes you all down and then keeps yeah. going. I That must suck. <laughs> Dude, that would suck in any game. Like, yeah. I, I just imagine myself like... Because the way that Shroud just picks up a game, never played it before, and, and it's just still insanely cracked. Like... I just can't imagine getting onto a game like going to like, oh, I'm going to have some fun with my friends. And then you just get matched up against Shroud. Like that's got to be so demoralizing or like anyone in a Twitch Rivals tournament that's against Shroud. You're just like, well, (laughs) cool, sweet. Round one it is. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Awesome. Have you played any Blood Hunt? Uh, No, I've watched him play a little bit, though. Dude, he like there was a tournament, like a Twitch Rivals tournament for it or something, and like the game's been out for like two weeks when it when it happened, and dude just drops like forty kills in a match in a game. I'm like, how does that even? He's like, I'm I sorry. take the cursor, I click on his head, and I win. I, I guess. Know, I, I guess. Don't know what, I don't know what the problem is, guys. Just do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I say anytime like someone asks me like if someone's getting frustrated at Valorant or any other shooter, just click on their heads. It's yeah, that it's, simple. It's really, just guys, click on their heads. I've watched Shroud. You just, you just, you just do it. You just do it. Problem is. <laughs> I had, speaking of Shroud, I had a very surreal experience once, which is I was getting an Uber in Phoenix of yeah. all places. And the dude like asked me what I did. I told him I did like YouTube and stuff. And he's like, he gets quiet for a second. And he's like, yeah, I used to play competitive CS. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And he's like, yeah, back in the day, he's like, I actually used to team with Shroud. And I was what? like, oh, wow. And he's like, yeah. And then I didn't really think there was a future to it. So I quit. And I was like, oh. oh. Huh. And then oh. he goes, how much do you think Shroud makes? <laughs> and I was like, again, this guy's driving, like, he's my Uber driver, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, a couple million dollars a month. And he was like, <sighs> and then he just, like, didn't speak for the rest of the yeah. ride. I was oh, like, no. oh, man. Oh. I'm sorry, dude. Like, I'm not. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I remember the first time I ever like started just doing some very simple basic math uh-huh. where I was like looking, I was like, okay, if this person has this many subscribers on Twitch and lowballing, let's say they're getting only $2.50 from Twitch per right. subscriber, but if they're that popular, they're probably getting more. But if they're getting $2.50 times this amount of people per month, not including any donations or any sponsorships or any, any other sources or any, any yeah. ads, any merch, anything, just from subscribers alone, that's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of money. It's like when the, the Twitch like earnings reports got leaked and everyone was like, oh, they're getting paid. And I was like, dude, they have like on their screen, they're like, I have 20,000 subscribers. Our goal is 21. Yeah. It's like, what do you, what do you think that number is? I don't, Hello? Doesn't mean you know exactly, but everyone yeah, yeah. was like, oh, I can't believe it. Back when the like Hello? subscriber record kept getting broken yeah. like by people, there was like, I feel like like there was one year where it just kept getting broken and the record's like almost 100,000. I don't even know what yeah, it, it was is like, now. It was, I think it's like close to 200,000 Yeah, it's like something. close to 200,000 now. But I remember when it was like, people were going, they're like, oh my God, I just broke the record. I got 150,000 subscribers. I was like, even if those people only stay subscribed for a month, yeah, that's $300,000 in a month more Sick. than more than $300,000 in one month yeah. from subscribers alone. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's it's uh it's silly for those big dogs. It's, it's silly. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's wild to think about. And then it drops off real quick. Yeah. I can't imagine. Dude, I I I know a lot. I have like a lot of streamer friends, but I also have a lot of streamer friends that are like they're a lot smaller and they like streaming is their job, but they don't have those kinds of like crazy numbers and like 
I'm very thankful for this job. And I say it all the time on the show that I have a very steady paycheck and Rhett and Link give me a check every month or <laughs> every two Wait, weeks. you getting paid? Every two weeks. Yeah, I know. I shocking, told this right? is the intern podcast. I got to. <laughs> oh, not the intern <laughs> jokes again. Again? No. Oh, no. Oh. No, it's, it's that's honestly a really long runner from like when I first started here. Because I think I, it was like when I first started here, Josh said, I give off big intern energy. And then everybody thought I was an intern. And so everybody would call me the intern. And then Josh was like, he would like tweet. He's like, no, Trevor's not actually an intern. Like, guys, stop calling him an intern. But now everybody calls me an intern as a joke. I swear to God, the email I got asking me to do the show said we gave our intern a podcast. I swear to God. I don't send Jamie? those emails out. I do not say we have a company. <laughs> Andrew, it's not me. Just, yeah, do you need me to step out for just a moment? Could you leave the room for <laughs> yeah, just, just a yeah, second? Yeah, yeah. If you need me. <laughs> I just need a quick five. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a cool premise for a show, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much the JHB of Mythical. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except I didn't actually ever start as an intern. <laughs> um... God, I, love, I, love, <laughs> I love James, but that kid, that poor kid, he really got just pigeonholed oh, into he did. that character. He did, yes. I'm thankful that he's full-time now, and I think he's ex- he's one of the most talented people I know at how to get engagement on Twitter and on social media. Like, I think he's a f- genius when it comes to that. Um, His Twitter game is very strong. Yeah, like, he just knows how to get, but like, oh man. The just all of the intern stuff for so long. I felt so bad for him sometimes. I um, because you sympathized. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. Like whether or not you're actually an intern, always being called to an intern or referred to as an intern or treated by fans like an intern, like it's the same thing. Whether or not you are, true. And um, but it was saying he was an intern on the inside, even if he wasn't an intern on the outside. I'm saying what? I don't know. (laughs) Dude, are you high? <laughs> no. <laughs> I told you to not get high before you came. Um, yeah, you were I an intern, say? so I, was I didn't listen to say you. something, and then you called. I was going to say something, and then you called me an intern. Now we're like five minutes off course. <laughs> what was I going to say? Ah, here's what I was going to say. Back to the show. No, I, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine like being a Twitch streamer and like just like it's so volatile and like obnoxiously the, so and and i just like the the idea of having that pressure all the time of like that being your income and that being your job of just to like have to like look at those numbers and like and you have no control like at the end of the day you know you can you can stream for 8 hours a day and put out really good content and be a really entertaining person and there's nothing that you can really do to control whether or not people are clicking on your stream to watch it and it's just like to to have that yep. like oh god oh. it just it makes me bleh, just makes me shiver and shake it's like even i mean with youtube you know you publish a video and even if it doesn't do well it's always running and it's always going and you're always making money on that if people are watching it like there's not but like with twitch it's like you have this time that you stream and that's when you make money yep. and so if you have one stream that like doesn't do as well it's not like okay well you know it might catch up overnight or it might catch up over the next week it's like that was it that's it's it. like the you're, end yeah you're you just have to live with that now and God, that just scares the shit out of me. I've tried to be both. Uh, and, at one, and at one point I was trying to do both at the same time. Yeah. And I hit a moment where I had that exact same realization, which was like my stream never took off. Like I would get like 100 to 200 viewers. Yeah. But uh, as my YouTube channel started to take off, it got to the point where my YouTube channel was a small business that was, you know, employing multiple people to yeah. run and my stream didn't pay my rent. Yeah. And it was like, Oh, why am I doing, like, why am I killing myself to try to do this? And I realized that even if I made it, like, that rat wheel you're describing, like, you could never stop. Yeah. And I, like, I remember Ninja and Tifu didn't go to one of the Fortnite tournaments. Yeah. Because they said even if they won, they would actually not make as much money as they did by missing the streams they had to miss to be there. And I was like... Oh, that sucks. Like, you are a prisoner at that point. I have a lot more flexibility by being a YouTuber. Like, I posted a video. It went live on, like, while I was in the car on the way here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I still did my job for today, but I still get to come and do something interesting and, like, hang out with you guys. Yeah. And do this lovely podcast. Oh, Oh. thank you. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're you're making YouTube videos and you're like, I want to take a week-long vacation, you just, like, I... You You gotta work harder. You gotta bust... You yeah. got to bust for a week before that or for a couple weeks before that, but you can bank up those videos, have them set to release. And then when you're gone, you don't have to worry like, 
I, when when streamers talk about taking breaks, it's like the biggest thing ever. Yep. They're like, oh yeah, I have to take a break from streaming, and it could just like completely kill everything because yeah, and like, I will make no money. Yeah, and they'll make no ah. money, and and I oh god, it's it's so scary because yeah, like I remember I when I when I was growing up and when Twitch was you know getting bigger and streaming was taking off, I was like, oh, it'd be so much fun to be a Twitch streamer. Like I would love that. Like I'd love to do that someday. And I was like, unless I have like the job security to go and be able to do that for fun, I I could never. I I just know that. I couldn't handle that mentally. It is so, it is such a big thing to take on and it is so much weight on your oh, yeah. shoulders. It's insane. It's scary. It scares, yeah. That, that's actually like the number one thing I say to anybody who asks me about like they want to get into content. I say, I, I recommend, it's not even like a platform thing like YouTube versus Twitch. I, I like recommend videos over live. Yeah. I'm like, listen, making VOD is a better life. You will have more time. You will have more control of your schedule. Yeah. Because also I have friends, like the other part we haven't even touched on is like, you don't know what time of day your stream might get successful. I've had friends yeah. who became successful streamers, but their streams were like, you know, degen hours. You know, yeah. they stream from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., right? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Everything we just described, but also you're stuck on the night shift forever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and no. when they try to switch the day, it's like nobody there. You yeah, know, like their there. audience literally exists in a different time zone. Yeah. It terrifying uh i quitting streaming was the best for my mental yeah, health <laughs> yeah it's interesting to see the um the rise now of like gaming orgs and and when in the past if you were assigned to a gaming org it was you played professionally and and now they're like all orgs just have content creators and it, it's cool to see that kind of dynamic shift of where like you can you can get signed to an organization i don't know how those contracts work i've never like you know been offered anything like that or had any interest pursued anything like that and so I don't know exactly how they work, but to even have like that kind of security, like I feel like it's a step in the right direction to have organizations like that. Because I think, I mean, you look at 100 Thieves and they've got, you know, a ton of streamers. They've got whole clothing lines. They're doing all sorts of stuff. They have a whole production company around them. And it's able to give these streamers a chance to, I think, not be as stressed. Because I think if you look at someone that's in an org versus someone that streams solo, like they don't have to worry as much about it because they know that they're no matter what, they're still going to have visibility because they're on an org, on a big org um, that's going to give them visibility. They're going to have things like YouTube videos that they're doing with the organization. I assume they're getting a paycheck from the organization. I don't know how it depends. works. Depends probably. I mean, it depends on the size of the org, the size of the creator. Yeah. I would say, uh, I agree. Like it, everyone's better when they come together, right? Like the, yeah. the rise of groups in, in general really help. I mean, Rhett and Link were a group, right? Yeah. Like, you you know, we're standing in a thing that's like the outcome of one of those doing really well. I yeah. have a group of friends, we do it. The, the thing about the eSport orgs is it really, I think in those situations, you have to know what you want when yeah. you're going into them because you are giving up a lot of freedom yeah. a lot of times, right? So like if you sign to an org, then they're going to be, they're going to own your sponsor rights, basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're going to be able to make you, not necessarily make you, but like they're going to push you in certain directions or they're going to want you to do X, Y, or Z. And you need to like go in that with, with that eyes wide open and be like, I'm not interested in running certain ele elements of the business maybe or yeah. whatever. I'm going to let this other org do it because for that to work is like they have to make more off of brands and things like that yeah. than they pay you, right? Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise it doesn't yeah. work. And also most orgs aren't profitable. So this is yeah. part of the reason they bring in creators is esports isn't profitable in yeah. general. Oh, and no, so yeah. they want creators to like bring in the sponsors because the, sponsors, the yeah. problem with being really good at video games is a lot of times that's all you're really good at yeah. and you know, there's the there's rare exceptions that, yeah. you know, become superstars like Shroud or something like, Shroud, like that. Yeah. But there's lots of people who are just kind of boring, but they don't miss. And that's that's cool. And that's yeah. awesome. But it doesn't it doesn't bring in the sponsors. It doesn't bring in the numbers. It doesn't do it. So they're they're trying to, like, merge this thing that I know. I don't think anybody's really figured out yet. Like, no, um, not at all. And that's the thing. It's like it's always flexible and it's always changing. And I don't think we're ever going to see it get to like a standard. I, I, I don't think at least in the foreseeable future, there's never going to be like, OK, this this place did it right. Everyone do it that way. Like. It's always going to be flexible. It's always going to be changing. And everyone's always going to be figuring out new ways to do things, different ways to do things. Because I think you have to in like the gaming and content creation world. Otherwise, you don't succeed. You can't it's get stagnant. Evolving. You always have to be on that next step. Um, what's your favorite sea shanty? Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me just hit the switch up. <laughs> Woo, let's go. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's um, the Billy of T. Come on now. The one that started the whole thing. The Wellerman? The Wellerman. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. I knew. I, I was like... Uh, Here's okay. I'm a bit of a sea shanty hipster. I, I had knew that this was the follow up. I was like, he didn't ask that because he didn't have like a thing ready to go. No, let's hear it. No, no, let's hear it. No, let's hear it. No, I I love sea shanties and I think that they should be more popular. But I remember like listening to sea shanties and um I remember when Wellerman got popular. I was like, y'all just found out about the longest Johns. 
Y'all just found out about the Longest Johns. I've been listening to the Longest Johns for ages. Um, they make great music. What what a what a thing to be. <laughs> just Such like... a dumb thing to be a hipster about. Like, oh, oh, I've been listening to sea shanties forever. Yeah. Since the 1600s. I knew the sea shanty way before you did, bro. <laughs> My great-great-grandfather was singing it on the deck of the Wellerman. Bro, you don't even know crap about sea shanties, yeah. dude. When the ship they're put to sea and yeah. the name of the ship with the billy of tea, my great-great-great-grand-uncle, yeah. on it. He was the ship. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he was True the ship. True story. Was, yeah, never mind, yeah. <laughs> Actually, can I change my answer? Oh, yeah. Uh, the one thing with the return of the, the sea shanties was everyone remembered that there is an incredibly badass song in Pirates that's like half of a sea shanty. Yeah. The, the yo ho Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, there's this dude on YouTube. His name's like Colin something or other. He has like one of those deep voices that just like yeah, is, yeah, yeah. is know, unearthly. You know, know exactly who I'm know. talking about. Dude, I listen. He did a cover of that. And it's like, I'm like, oh. He's insane. Yeah. I gotta look him up. Hold but it's on. like a third of a song. It's not yeah. even like a, it was like Disney was like, eh, put this at the beginning of Pirates and they'll love it. And we did. Yeah. And then they never finished. Finished it, which is rude. What um he he did a cover of uh the Misty Mountain song uh from The Hobbit. Oh um, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh, and it's just <laughs> crazy. His voice. You listen to it, and it's like there's no human's voice can go that deep. That doesn't. That's yeah. not a real noise. Like from can, the abyss, you can feel his throat vibrating. Yeah, like he sings it, and you're like. That is so deep. I can like my own throat is vibrating because of how deep your, this your guy laptop's is singing. Your laptop's like rattling. It's like can yeah. I? Huh? <laughs> I was a bear tenor in high school. I was like a bass when we needed bass. I was a tenor when we needed tenor. My uh, choir director told me I was actually a true baritone, which turns out that means you just can't sing. <laughs> right? He's like, he's like, well, we need a tenor too, so just don't sing the parts you can't sing. So, yeah. And the tenors would be like, ha ah! And I'd be like, <laughs> you, you have to look like you're participating. Oh, it's great. Man. I went to like a small school, and so we had like, we didn't have a huge boys section in the choir, and so depending on the year or the semester, it was like we'd either have like more basses or more tenors. And so my director's like, you can sing both parts. So whichever one we need more of, I'm just going to put you there. And so I just kind of swap back and forth between whatever. He's a dirty man. He got it done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the job's too to big, you call in Trevor. You play any Sea of Thieves? <laughs> Actually, okay. Uh, sea of Thieves is one of those sea games. Sea of Thieves nuts fit in your mouth. <sighs> 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 That did not just happen to me. <laughs> you really are an intern, aren't you? <laughs> oh my I'm so god. <laughs> god. Oh my god. I, oh, I cannot believe that just happened to me. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god, I'm so good. <laughs> I just was so genuinely excited about Sea of Thieves, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> There's no more trust now. We, we're 48 <laughs> yeah. minutes in. There was trust. We were gonna it's be gone. Friends, and now he's like, he's going to leave. Just like block him on Twitter. Block him on that. Rhett, Rhett and Link. You need to fire Trevor immediately. <laughs> At Rhett and Link. I met your intern today. He was very rude. He was like, very what, rude. What is, he, what is he talking about? <laughs> oh, man. Why is this no. unhinged Minecraft YouTuber tweeting us? I'm sorry. <laughs> I actually do want to hear about Sea of Thieves, though. No, you ruined it. No, no, I I had the funniest Sea of Thieves story ever, and I'm gonna be I, I'm gonna sound like the worst person ever. I'm gonna really. You like, already are. You already are. Mission accomplished. I cyber bullied a kid. Oh, by that's accident. that's what Sea of Thieves is for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I um. Well, tell me about your Sea of Thieves experience. Oh, now you want to hear about mine? I want to. Unless you want me to tell my story first. No, you wait in line. Okay, <laughs> it's my no, time. Please, now. please, go ahead, go ahead. Please, you have the floor. <laughs> so thank you <laughs> please uh <laughs> I can't stop thinking <laughs> oh, man. oh man all right I'm good We're yeah no I'm fine I'm fine <clears throat> as I was saying uh I, every once in a while, I would stream Sea of Thieves, but I didn't really know the game. Yeah. And, you know, a bunch of Minecraft YouTubers jumping in to hit play Sea of Thieves. And we had this streak that um, 100% of the times we played Sea of Thieves, we had been cracking. Yeah. And, which is, I know it's not that big a deal once you know how to play the game, but when yeah. you don't know how to play the game, it's terrifying. Yeah. So, two of my YouTube buddies um, have, like, fish-related phobia. So, one, is a, one has actual, like, ichthobia or whatever. Yeah. And the other one has, like, the fear of deep water. Yeah. And Sea of Thieves is real enough that it bothers both of them. Yeah. Um, and so we just kept getting cracking. And yeah. 
We finally convinced the guy who was Fear of Deep Waters to play. He was like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I was like, dude, you're on a boat. It's not a big yeah. deal. It's like a horror game at that point. And, and it was the day I was about to hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. And so we're, I have like a sub counter up on the stream and we're like about to hit it and we're sailing along and we get crackened. Yeah. As I hit 100,000 subs on YouTube. <laughs> and so I'm trying to like say thank you. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, guys, it just, this means like so much. You yeah, know, it's like a yeah. big moment, right? Yeah. And we're getting cracking. And these two people, these two idiots with like genuine phobias are screaming, <laughs> right? And the claws come up and they slam down on the ship and like tear it to shreds yeah. and we fall in the water. And uh, Sunday, who is the one with the, the deep water fear, he goes, nope, nope. And he just alt F force and like closes and just like leaves. No. And I'm like, anyway, guys, thanks for a hundred. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway oh really big moment for everyone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no. So see if these ruined my moment. That's really what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> see if these, if you have a fear of deep waters, like that's a horror game at that point. Oh yeah. Cause the water's like, the water physics are yeah, so the waves, beautiful and yeah, good. Yeah. Oh man, it's great. No, I was, so I have two friends that are like, they started playing Sea of Thieves and they're like really good at it. Like they know the game, they know what to do, they know the mechanics. And then I got on there and I have no clue what I'm doing. And I and I told this specifically, I was like, don't tell me how to play the game. I was like, I'm here to vibe. I'm vibing out. I'm here to, vibe. I'm here to vibe out and enjoy did my time as a pirate. Shanties? I did, I did. But we were doing, it was when they did the Megalodon event. Uh, um, and I still like, I knew the basics roughly, you know, I knew how to repair the ship and stuff. Do you know your port from your starboard? No. Okay. Port is left, starboard's right? Mm, port's a fancy drink. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> this goofball over here, silly guy, talking about port, fortified wine. <laughs> like, I don't know nothing about port. Wow. Okay. Mm, my bad. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> I, I like knew the basics, but basically it, they would do everything while I just dicked around on the ship. And, but for the, we had four of us playing, but for the Megalodon event, you needed five. And so we picked up this random kid that we found and like you can voice chat to other people and we picked up this random kid that we found and put him in our group. And we like did like the whole event, but I think, I can't remember. He was like still playing with us. I think it was when we were like towards the end of the event or something, there was a fight going on and I just kept shooting this kid because you can team kill you with no consequences. Yep. So this kid, I just kept like shooting him with like a blunderbuss or a musket or whatever. And I just, and I was like spawn camping him because you get off the boat. You like, when you die, you like respawn back on the boat. So I would just stand there and I'd wait for him to respawn and I'd just kill him. And he was screaming and he was probably like 12 years old. And I feel a little bit bad, but it was, it was really funny. He's like, stop killing me. And he's screaming. And then, oh, <laughs> we hear on his mic his mom comes in and tells him to stop screaming and she makes him get off the game because he was yelling so much because i was killing him over and over again i know dear twitter I know it was bad. Cyberbullying is not okay, Trevor. I it's not, and I was <laughs> I was intoxicated. <laughs> well, that doesn't make it okay, no. does it? <laughs> no, but I just thought it was really funny. <laughs> it's pretty kid. funny. It's pretty funny. We like finished the event, and I just kept killing it. And he was like still at our party, and he would just respawn on the boat, and I just like kept it. He was like, "Stop killing me." He taught him an important lesson: not to trust strangers on the internet. Dude, honestly, that's yeah. the way that I thought about it because I was like, the amount of <laughs> times hero. when I was young playing RuneScape, getting scammed by people, by predatory RuneScape players online, scamming me out of my hard-earned GP. I'm not your you, GP. You got to learn that lesson sometime. I, I feel bad about it, though. I do. If you're you out find him. If you're out there listening and by any chance, bell. and this rings a bell, you remember some douchebag killing you on Here's the thing, you get 500 these. people who this rings a bell for. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, that was me. Because <laughs> it's probably happened to everyone, because that game is so dumb. Oh, it is. That's um, what makes it so fun. Um, You fell out of a raft on the Nile Rapids. Oh, my God, Jamie. <laughs> Yeah, right? She's crazy. She's like a stalker. <laughs> she literally <laughs> cyber stalks all of our guests. Good God. Yeah, that happened. That actually did happen. When did um, that happen? What like what was the scenario? What's the story? So I was 18 years old. Okay. Um, and my dad and I, uh, my family had a really close friend who uh, was from Uganda. Mm -hmm. He came to the States to get educated. And that's like when we met him when he was going to college. Yeah. Uh, and he moved back to Uganda and he invited my dad and I to come uh, and visit him. Yeah. So we went and stayed with him for like two weeks in Uganda. And one of the things we did is, so Uganda uh, owns Lake Victoria, which is the yeah. headwaters of the Nile because yeah. the Nile flows backwards and goes up to Egypt. Yep. 
Um, and so basically that's the, the source of the Nile and you can whitewater raft that. And it's really, really unique because the rocks are incredibly deep. Yeah. So the rapids are actually like it's just 40 feet deep. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like big white waves, like class five, class six rapids. Yeah. Which are class six are like, ha ha, don't. Yeah. Show, we went past the class six because we were doing class five. I was like, is there a class six? And he like points and it was just like a spout of water coming out a wall, just going. And then he yeah. was like, that's that. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you don't do this. And I was yeah, like, yeah. all right, cool, cool. Um, but we went down a class five rapid. And I used to have this photo. It's on like some CD somewhere. Yeah. But the uh, raft tipped sideways. And the I distinctly remember there were these like two British teachers who were sitting in front of me and they were like hung over. But this kid, this dude made like the most athletic move I've ever seen in my life because he basically just like Neo ran up the boat as it was going down and he jumped off the side as it went like vertical. But you can see the wave just like reaching up and grabbing me in the bottom left and just like hunk, yeah. pull me in. And then uh, I was stuck under the raft and I like bounced along oh, the rest God. of the raft underneath. Well, at the time I was actually a state champion swimmer. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, nowadays I'd probably be like, ah! yeah. <laughs> But well, that, and then, that was it. Yeah. That's one of the things about why I, are you like a big whitewater rafter? Um, that's one of the few times I've done it. And okay. I think it's probably ruined it because North American whitewater rafting looks way boring comparatively. Have you ever been to Idaho? Yeah, actually. You have? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm born and raised in Idaho. No, what part? Boise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I used to live up near like Pullman and uh, Ida, uh, Moscow. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, okay. Did you go to school up there? Yeah. Oh, cool. Way, way back when. Wait, did you go to U of I? Uh, basically, yeah. Okay. It's a long story. I hate it. Free. Yeah. But yeah, okay. We don't have to talk yeah, about it. We, we go back to Whitewater. <laughs> um, no, I got out quick. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we're like a big Whitewater rafting family. Um, we do it all the time. I, we would like do it growing up because there's like a lot of, there's a lot of Whitewater in Idaho, but there's like a couple rivers, you know, outside Boise that are like really chill. There's some bigger rapids, but there's one, there's the main of the Payette River, which is like a super chill, like float. Um, and there's a lot of companies that like do tours. And so like when I was younger, we would do some tours, but then eventually we were like, all of our friends had rafts. And we're like, why don't we just get our own raft? We're always going out. Like, let's just do it. So, um, I actually, I fell out in a class four over in Oregon, Ooh. um, when I was like 17, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. But um, I, I, it, like the North American ones are much more rocky, right? Yeah. I mean, when water's that big and the rocks are like rivers are that deep, it is just huge waves. And that's like sometimes fun. Like, um, especially if you get like a big in Idaho, when we would get big snowfalls, mm. all that snow would melt and you would get like a lot bigger water, but it actually is a lot safer because you're just, it's just big waves. You're not like, you're not hitting anything underneath, but yeah, we were over on the Owyhee river. Um, and it was my dad and I, we were on like a multi-day trip camping with some friends and it was like kind of a, the, the, the river kind of did like this dog leg thing where it came around to the left and it kind of pushed up against the wall of a Canyon. So there was this one part of the river that was like flowing up against this rock. And then over on the left side, it was just all like rock field, like very shallow. So you couldn't go that way. You had to like, basically like whip around this, this like dog leg as okay. the water's like pushing up. Um, but we didn't have enough speed going into it. So our, our raft went up on the rock and same thing, like tilted this way and we both fell out. Um, yeah. And I actually get, ended up like getting stuck underwater, like between a rock twice. and a hard place, twice. a rock and a rock in a, in a hard place, maybe another rock who yeah, knows at this yeah. point. Um, but yeah, he, I, I was stuck at first by the hips. I managed to like wiggle free out of those two rocks and then I started to flow back up and I got sucked back down mm. hit my head on a rock and then I was stuck by my foot and I had to like wiggle my foot out of the little wetsuit boot that I had on um, and then I swam like off to the shore and my head was just like bleeding and it was crazy definitely almost died definitely almost took a till, took a little wet river nap yeah my, um, mine was more of like a fun wet roller coaster yeah yeah, yeah. that sounds fun yeah mine was like going to Schlitterbahn or you know, <laughs> something like that I was like Wee! <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's always, honestly, like, that's one of the most fun things you can do, like, whitewater rafting. Here's the thing. Mother Nature is d insanely dangerous. and She don't like us. <laughs> and rivers are extremely dangerous. Um, and you can be really dumb, and you can get hurt on even really small rapids. Like, there's, like, people that die in Idaho all the time just being dumb, drunk idiots, not doing the right thing. Well, also, like, I uh, genuinely, I mean, I haven't done as much in the U.S. whitewater-wise, but, like, I would be much more worried about doing something like you than what I did because there were no rocks that I was in danger of hitting, right? I got yeah. thrown into water, but there was nothing to get stuck in. I got stuck on the only thing you get get stuck under, which is the boat. Which is and the boat. boat was moving. So you just put yeah. your hands up and yeah. you push and you eventually just like 
yeah. come out the back of the boat and you're fine. Also, you're wearing a life jacket. Like, yeah, well, the life jacket's what's the problem in that exact situation. Yeah, it's like, well, you're floating up. And you're yeah. like, but there's a thing. And there's a boat up there. No, I've gotten I've gotten thrown under a raft, a raft a couple times sometimes when you pop out, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's fine. I've lost a couple hats. That sucks. Oh, when you're dude. wearing a hat, you go in the water, lose the hat. I've lost so many good hats to the river. <sighs> R.I.P. The river, the river tax strikes I'm gonna again. I'm going to pour one out for all the hats that I've lost. Now we've got our own river. Sorry, Jamie. I did it for the bit, but now I realize I might have ruined the table. I was like, there's no way he's going. Oh, he's going to do it. Yeah. Can we, can we hold, I like hats hold for a lot. paper towel, please? Hold for paper towels. Can you towels. get me a tissue? I've made a mess. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jamie. Thank you. Kleenex, not a sponsorship. Good for all of your wet messes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was literally like, is he? This is a good mythical daycare. <laughs> Jamie gets put in charge of me for an hour and a half, <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> All right. This is a game that we like to play here on the show called Rapid Fire Favorites. <gasps> okay. So I'm going to give you like a thing, like a soda flavor. That's right. not going to be one of them, but then you're going to have to give me your favorite as fast as possible. And then I'm going to judge you based on your answer. So if you answer stupidly in the moment, then I get to make fun of you. Or if you give a good answer, then maybe I'll agree with you. Or maybe I'll just say, eh. That was okay. Any of those three reactions will be coming from me. I feel like eh, it's okay is how most people feel about me in general. So <laughs> um, No, only I'm allowed to hate myself on this show. Oh, please. I was hating myself before you were born. <laughs> 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 All right. Rapid fire favorites. Are you ready? Yeah. Number one. Board game. Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. That counts. That okay. counts. That's a tabletop RPG. All right. Number two. You ready? Yeah. Inclement weather. Ooh, a little bit light rain. Light rain. Yeah. I respect that a lot. I respect that a lot. Nothing like, well, especially because I work inside. There's nothing yeah. like just kind of like, ah, oh, yeah. I couldn't be doing anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to feel guilty. Yeah. Number three, movie genre. Uh, action, suspense, like thriller. Okay. What's your favorite thriller movie? <sighs> I mean, The Matrix is my favorite movie of all time. Okay. Um, and so anything that's kind of like got action, but twisty with that sort of thing. So Fight Club's in there. Um, what was I going to say? I had a movie that I was going to mention. That was movie genre. That, that was, was the end of the genre, game. genre. And so, now if you want to do one more, we can. Yeah. What's in my pocket? Yeah. That's not as... <laughs> Everybody always gives me the same look when I say, we're going to play a game called What's in My Pocket. Honestly, I don't get it. It's because I was genuinely expecting you to have something weird in your pocket. I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the that's the game. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you three <laughs> hints okay. as to what's in my pocket, and I'm gonna give you three guesses to guess what it is. And then if you guess it right, then you get to keep it. Is it something that I want? Jamie, to keep? these are the freest hints ever. I gotta start Listen, vetting these hints. No, Jamie studied me. She knows <laughs> I'm an idiot. We're giving it away. She knows I'm an idiot. Oh my god! Well, it's either they're too hard and no one gets it, or they're easy. Take away. Honestly, don't even give him the last clue. Then what? Okay, you get the. Whoa, 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 you get, whoa. I want half of the last clue. No, you get the first two clues. I'm telling you, if you, I, she literally Great. just described the entire like thing, what it is, without saying just the name. It, it now there's expectations. You're gonna make me look stupid or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm giving you the first two hints, and then I'll give you two guesses. And if you don't get it after two guesses, which I would be very surprised, then I'll give you the third hint. All right, deal. <laughs> hint number one: it resembles an animal. And hint number two: it floats. Is it a rubber ducky? Yes. There we go. <laughs> it's glow in the dark too. Oh, dang. It's green. Oh, I yeah, never get that. It glows in the dark. Is that a... You didn't get a squeaky one, Jamie? Hey, budget got cut for intern. Yeah. Sorry. All right, I'm wrapping it up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, there's something I'm supposed to say. Are you... Are you guys friends? Jamie, I was getting there. <laughs> oh my God. Can you let me host the show? Do you not trust me? I didn't say that many things this whole time. Jamie, <laughs> it's really hard to like <laughs> perform and be the host of, of such a popular podcast when you are constantly getting yelled at by your producer. Uh, yeah, I, I did the yelling. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was I me. just feel like mom and dad are fighting. I can come back. This is my childhood all over again. Dude, Jamie and I, we like to rib each other. Yeah. We've got a good back and forth. There's no, there's really no bad. It's kind of just the one way. One way, which way? Me no to comment. Jamie or Jamie to me? No comment. Because Jamie's been ribbing me a lot. I haven't seen that. Their looks. I <laughs> She's been staring <laughs> daggers at me. You, you make so much eye contact with me during the podcast that I don't know how to look at you sometimes. What's wrong with that? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. I feel like you're talking to me sometimes. So I just am. Cool I like to I enjoy you in the conversation. I really how like that. How am I the villain here? How <laughs> am I the villain here? How not, am I the villain here? 
You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I'm the villain. Um, so, <laughs> we friends? Do you want to hang out? Do you want to talk again Actually, sometime? I do want to hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to hang out? Uh, 100%. Okay, let's do 100%. it. 100%. We'll cool. do it. All right. When the cameras go off, I will get your phone number or whatever. Cool. Yeah, I'll yeah, follow yeah. you on Twitter, but that's epic. Uh, I had a great time. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell people where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at youtube.com slash sigils. And also, uh, I'm publishing a book this month. So if you like urban fantasy, uh, it's called Soul Fraud and it'll be on Amazon. Frick, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about, Jamie. I didn't get to like half the list. I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about like all fantasy books. Can we start over? Can you put the clock back to zero? Redo. I'm down for redo. <laughs> We're redoing it. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out the whole RuneScape beginning, and then you can no! put your. <laughs> that was gold. That was us finding our stride. Leave the RuneScape in, God damn it! Then you don't Son get. Of then a... you don't get books, except for except for Andrews. No, 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 please uh, b- tell me more about the book. Though. Okay. Uh, so I'm self-publishing a book. Yeah. Um, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to write books. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like my big passion before video games or anything. Yeah. Um, and so it's called Soul Fraud. It's a an urban fantasy novel, and basically the premise is um. The main character is like a 24-year-old. It's his birthday. He has this terrible life. Like his, most of his family's dead. He's like dropped out of college, flunked out of college. And this demon appears him, Dan the demon. And Dan's like a terrible salesman. Yeah. And he's like, man, we can save your life. We can fix everything if, for 10 years in exchange for your soul. Yeah. And dude's like, nah, man, like I've seen that TV show. Like, yeah, my life sucks, but no, I'm good. Like, yeah. I'll keep the soul. Thanks. And Dan has like a little mental breakdown because uh, he's really behind on his quota. And obviously his bosses aren't super understanding. Yeah. He works for hell. Uh, <laughs> and so he forges his signature on the contract and then vanishes in a puff of smoke. Yeah. And then like this dude's life like turns around, like crazy stuff starts happening to him. And he's like, okay, so this is a problem. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need that back. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Like 1-800-MY-SOUL? Like yeah. how, do I, how do I get this back? Um, and so he kind of has to start like learning about the supernatural world and uncovering all this stuff to go on a journey to try to figure out how to get his soul back before time runs out. That's epic. Uh, and that's, that's basically the That premise. sounds awesome. That's awesome. I want to read it. And it'll be on Kindle, paperback, hardback, and uh, audiobook. So everything. When? What's the date uh, again? June. It's called Soul Fraud. It comes out June 30th. Everybody, please check out all social stuff. Check out his book coming out June 30th. Check him out on YouTube. Follow him on all the socials and stuff um, for sure. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on, Thanks for man. having me. This is a blast. Everybody, that was Sigils. Um, what a great guy. What a fun time. We had a great conversation. Uh, make sure to check out all the stuff he's got going on. Go check out his YouTube channel. Um, he's putting out great videos. Follow him on his socials and check out his book. It sounds really good. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to read it when it comes out. So June 30th, his book is coming out. Check that out on Amazon.com. Jamie, how do you think that went? Oh, that was great. Yeah? Yeah, that was... Freak, yeah. It was literally so much fun. And uh, there was... Uh, when you got him... With that Sea of Thieves joke. (laughs) Yeah. I died, and he died a little inside, I think. Yeah, no, that was perfect. I got him so good. (laughs) He was not, he was, he jet, he was so excited. Sea of Thieves, great game, phenomenal game, and he was so excited to talk about it. He was, he was ready, and I just, oh man, I just ended his whole career. So, I guess you have nothing to check out now, because I ended his career with that roast. No, I'm kidding. Um, well, he kind of got you back with the intern stuff. Yeah. Okay. He really, he was, <laughs> he was coming at me with a little bit of heat there. Okay. He, he could, he could, uh, he could take it, but he could also give it. That was, um. Yeah. A little tit for tat. That's inappropriate, Jamie. Is it? Can't talk about tit on the show. <laughs> Jamie. I'm literally. Jamie, this is a family show. There was a show. Josh episode and you guys talked about hentai titties. J- J- Jamie, this is a family friendly show. I'm going to have to ask you to lock it up. Uh, Everyone, there's something that I need to tell you about. Please. Something that I've told you about before. Oh, oh, did I need your permission? (laughs) No. (laughs) No, I just said, please talk about it. It's because it's awesome. It is awesome. It's a Mythicon. It's freaking Mythicon. Um, There's a lot of, it's a lot. It's honestly a lot to talk about. It's a lot to tell you about. Uh, so I'm probably not going to tell you everything about it. Uh, everything that I can tell you, however, is on a website called MythiconTickets.com. MythiconTickets.com is where you can find all the information for Mythicon and Mythicon Tickets at MythiconTickets.com. But what I can tell you is we've got a lot of stuff planned, a lot of very fun stuff. It's going to be in Austin, Texas. Uh, we are We are creating a whole mythical environment. The kitchen team is going to be there. That includes me. Uh, Rhett and Link are gonna be there. <laughs> That's huge. 
uh, Emily, Dave, and Chase, Stevie, a bunch of other crew members are going to be there. We're all going to be having a good time. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be meeting people. Uh, we got some live podcasts going on, um, including mine and Ear Biscuits and Hot Dog as a Sandwich. Tons of other stuff. There's going to be a whole dance party. There's going to be karaoke. There's going to be just, it, it, it's cool. We're going to be at a ranch outside of Austin, just having a weekend long party and it's going to be mythical and it's going to be amazing. So go check out all the details at mythicontickets.com and get your tickets if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, check, 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 check that out. And also, um, make sure to like, like, and su- subscribe. Um, we got new episodes coming out every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcast or talks too much. Uh, YouTube version comes out following Monday. Y'all know the drill. Leave a review. Leave a comment. Let me know what uh what I can be doing better. What Jamie can be doing better, even though probably nothing, because Jamie's really good at her job, and I only make her life harder. Um, no. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's true. You add value, Trevor. I add value. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> make sure to follow us on all the socials, all the mythical socials and stuff. Check out our other channels. Check out the other podcasts. Uh, we got a lot going on. Check out Mythical Pods on TikTok for all sorts of podcast content. Funny clips from all of them. Cool clips from all the podcasts. If you want to taste, want to taste. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I got to tell people. I think that's the good, the right outro. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. That was good singing. Nice work. Everybody, leave a thumbs up if you like that <laughs> singing from Jamie. Huge song. I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it a buck 100 with all of you. It is 5.44 p.m. on a Friday, uh, and I'm about to go get Liddy. Liddy in the city. Uh, so with that, I bid you all adieu and enjoy your weekend, if it is. Thank you. <laughs>